Hello. And if I got a treat in yeah. store for you today, as I welcome none other than the founder of the Admiral Group, Henry Engelhart, as we reflect on the phenomenal success of Admiral, our careers there, and how those experiences help us in life after Admiral. Hi, Henry, how are you? Hi, Mandy, I'm great, thanks. Glad it's to be here. So good to see you again. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to start off by asking you how your personal values aligned to the culture at Admiral that became the cornerstone of our success as one of the major employers in South Wales? Well, it's a, it's a good question. It is uh, very important that the leaders have values, that there are lines in a sense that cannot be crossed. And, you know, management and, and companies like this, they, they evolve. They don't just, you know, plop down in the final form and then just stay like that for, for 100 years or even 10 years or even one year. They're, they're living organisms and they're constantly evolving. So a culture is constantly evolving. And that's also because different values come in and are emphasized and de-emphasized and new people with slightly different values and so forth. But your values are very important. If I can take a minute, Mandy, and give you an example of a little story. Um, so I was, uh, it's, so after I stepped down as CEO, I did do a stint as, as CEO of our US operation, um, Elephant, for about a year. And while I was there, we had a, a very senior manager, was doing a very important job. And uh, he was a very bright guy, was a, was a decent guy. He worked hard, I know, because I was kind of there on my own. I was in on the weekends a lot, and he was often there. He did, like I said, a very important role. And, uh, but he had, a, he had a bit of a sense of humor. Some people loved it. Some people weren't so crazy about it. You know, he wasn't exactly everybody's um, cup of tea sort of thing. But, you know, he was important. Anyway, on this one occasion, he, um, he found himself double booked between the weekly department meeting, which was about 15, 20 people, and him teaching a training course to new starters. And he was furious. He didn't, you know, he knew he had to do the teaching because that was signed up. He had six people waiting for him, whatever it was. And he didn't want to miss the weekly meeting. And he stormed up to the weekly meeting just before it began. And he burst into the room and he pointed to the person who had, he thought he had double booked him. And you fool, you idiot, you know, blah, blah, blah. You did this. He just, he just let her have it. He just ripped her to shreds, right? So she makes an official complaint and that's how I got involved. And we interviewed basically everybody who was who was there. Curious thing on the, these kinds of things, a bit of a tangent here, but a curious thing because um, half the people thought that he opened the door and came into the room and half the people we interviewed said the door was open and he just stepped in. So, you know, curious to what people remember, but everybody did uh, concur that he stepped in and, you know, was really, really harsh to this lady. and. Uh, you know, so so we interviewed everybody and her and him and so forth. And and in the end, you know, what did we do? Well, it was pretty easy. We fired him. He had a senior job. He was going to be very difficult to replace, was difficult to replace. But we had to let him go. Why? Because in an organization where I'm in charge, every member of the, of the organization must treat every other member of the organization with dignity and respect at all times. Sorry, that's a line that cannot be crossed. It's not maybe, it's not sometimes, it's not whoops, it's always. There is no excuse for not treating a colleague, it goes beyond that, a customer, a, a supplier, uh, pretty much anybody, with dignity and respect. It doesn't mean you always agree, doesn't mean you don't have discussions, they may even be heated, but you treat the other person with dignity and respect, and he crossed that line. That's my value. You as a manager, you'll have your own values. I have other values, um, but that's a, that's a very big one for me. And so that then cascades down the organization because clearly if I hear about an instance where a member of staff treated another member of staff in a, in a very foul manner, like in this case, well, they're not gonna be able to work in my organization. So the leader's values are extremely important, but other people's values also come into the equation. Long answer to a, to, a, to a short question. 
No, I think that's a great example of, of culture. And, you know, the culture had many forms, didn't it, at Admiral? Not not least some of the happy memories of the fun times we had there. I, I lost count of the number of times I saw you um, in a competition where you ended up with eggs splattered on your head, for example. Uh, I, I became the referee in that one after a while, Andy. I learned my lesson. I did get a few eggs, though, in egg roulette. But, you know, there's a, there's a number of things you, you really need to understand about the Admiral culture. First of all, why is culture important? Yeah. You know, and a lot of people think, well, you know, you want your people to be this and that and da 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 da. And yeah, 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 it's all true. But end of the day, your culture needs to deliver a superior economic result. Mm -hmm. You're running a business. It's about the economic result. And everything you do should be focused on creating that better economic result. Now, we, myself, all the other senior managers, clearly yourself, Mandy, believe very much that the better you treat people, the better your economic result becomes. Mm -hmm. And so we follow that path. Simple you know, simple uh, words, if people like what they do, they'll do it better. And we developed a really strong culture based on four pillars. Now, pillars mm -hmm. are important, if they're pillars, because things rest on pillars. So these four things aren't the culture. They're just what the culture rests on. They tie all of Admiral Group together. And that's communication, equality, reward, and fun. So fun is a, a, an important aspect to the culture, Mandy, but it is only one of those four pillars. And upon those pillars then come the individual cultures by country, by department, by manager. They're all going to be different, slightly different, sometimes very different from each other, but they're all going to rest on those four pillars. Communication being hugely important, making sure people are involved and engaged in the organization. And to do that, you don't treat them like mushrooms and put them in a box somewhere and hide them away in the dark. You let them know what's happening to the, to the business, to the, to the company, to the department, to the team, whatever it might be. You've, you've got to get them involved and engaged. And that means an information flow going, going in all directions. Equality, you get rid of the obvious divides. One of the things that, that fills me with pride to this day is that you go anywhere in Admiral Group, you go to Halifax, you go to Richmond, you go to Delhi, you go to Swansea, it doesn't matter. There are no managerial offices. All the managers, when they're in the office these days, I guess, they sit out open plan with everybody else. There are no, there are meeting rooms, but there are no managerial offices. And that's because we're all in this together. It's symbolic. What do walls do? They stop people from seeing in. They stop communication. Why do you want to stop those things? You actually want to encourage them to get those people engaged and involved so that they do that better job. So equality comes in many different ways. Yeah, you know, I once worked for a company where the managers were all given chairs with arms and the other staff given chairs without arms. Why divide your workforce, Mandy? I, I don't, I, I, to this day, I don't understand. One time, one of the chairs with arms went missing. We found it about two days later, and the mm -hmm. arms had been bent out of shape. There's enough challenges in business from competition, consumer behavior, regulators, governments, economics, et cetera, et cetera, suppliers, so forth and so on. Why create conflict within your organization? Just doesn't make sense. So equality as best you can. You know, yes, people get paid different salaries. Yes, people have different titles. That is true. So it's not a, a, a communist society. It's not a commune. It's not everybody equal. But you get rid of those obvious divides between people as best you can. Reward. Reward comes in lots of ways, Mandy. Certainly it's money. But, you know, shares were a very important part of Admiral. We started giving shares out to everybody in the company when we did the MBO at the end of 1999, beginning of 2000. Why? Because we wanted our staff to feel like they owned part of the business. Best thing to do, give them part of the business to own. And then they do feel like an owner. Yeah. And they are an owner. So everybody is tied in to this common, common goal common vision. Yeah. But reward goes far beyond that. Simple things that often are overlooked, like thank you. Just mm -hmm. saying thank you to people is amazing, the power. Again, when I went into Richmond, into this, uh, in, into our operation there in, in 2017, 
I introduced the concept of thank you cards. I, I, my first week there, I gave every one of my managers, about seven managers, I gave them all a thank you card. And I said, hand write a message to someone else in the organization, can be anybody in the organization. And this was on Wednesday and leave it on their desk on Friday afternoon. And they did. And I did the same thing the next week. And the following week, I brought the, a stack of thank you cards and they kind of came up and took one. And since then, we had a pile of thank you cards on my desk and people would come by and take them all the time. You, st and you saw them starting to pop up on people's desks. People were, were chuffed to bits, Mandy, to receive a handwritten thank you note from a, a senior manager in the organization. I once got a thank you note from somebody thanking me for sending them a thank you note. <laughs> it's amazing. The power of thank you. You know, I do hear you know, people in business say, oh, well, that's the way we pay. That's why we pay them. You know, da, da, da. well, that's rubbish. Yeah, we do pay them. And that's important. They wouldn't work there if you didn't pay them. But appreciation means so much to people and helps them to feel good about what they're doing. And it goes back to people like what they do. They do it better. And that's what you want, because end of the day, you want that better economic outcome. And of course, there is fun. You know, you were referring Egon, you know, was egg roulette. It's, it's great to see your managers play egg roulette. Basically, uh, you have a, a first of one to one against somebody. There are six eggs in a, in a, in a bowl. You can't see them. Um, five of them are hard boiled. You reach your hand and you grab an egg and you crack it on the forehead of the person sitting opposite you. And I can tell you that a hard boiled egg cracked on your forehead can hurt a little bit, but you're waiting to see who gets the one that's not hard boiled. And that's a bit messy. And they are then that person who gets that one is out. And it's a knockout competition, truly a knockout competition. And the, and the winner goes on to the next round. And it's great fun to watch the management team play egg roulette. And I became the referee because <clears throat> I learned. I learned my lessons early. <laughs> I remember those so well. And some great examples there of what ultimately was the culture and, you know, something that I've got so many fond memories of. And it's interesting you mentioned the international uh, operations because one of my memories that really struck me was when I travelled out to Rome in 2008 um, to sort of help with the accounts area in, in Conte. I remember walking into reception and being really struck by the consistency of the office mm. and the culture, mm. how people were just falling over themselves to make me welcome. And quite honestly, the only difference between Rome and our HQ in Cardiff was that people spoke Italian and the sun was shining. <laughs> apart from that everything yeah. was pretty much the same I, yeah. I get you know the the culture in in Rome has always been amazing and I guess it's not a huge surprise that the lady that set up and ran the business in Rome is now the uh, group CEO so uh and part of that is because she was able to get that extra effort from people down to that you know, really, really great culture. I always came back from my trips to, to, to Conte in Rome with more energy than when I left. It was, it was an amazing place. It is an amazing place. Absolutely. And it's great that you mentioned, Milena, because, you know, one of my memories of being there was that her and the team took me out for dinner in the evening. So, mm -hmm. you know, a great example that continues to live on of, of the culture which was one of the elements of success in Admiral, but there were so many others. Of course, it, Admiral grew beyond, you know, anything that any of us ever imagined. And I was just going to ask you today if you were going to sort of single out, aside from the culture, you know, one or two things that you feel were instrumental in that success, what would they be? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I actually have done quite a lot of thinking about it. And uh, I've written a, a, I've written a book, which um, oh, I've got a copy here, uh, Think, Lead, Succeed, um, which currently is on uh, Amazon, but it's an old version. I'm going to put a newer version up very soon. And, and in it, I talk about three keys to, you know, creating great organizations, being a great leader. And uh, so I've, I've reduced it to these three items. And the first item is great leaders make great decisions. 
And you make great decisions by collecting information and interrogating information. Very important. It's not just collecting it. It's knowing how to ask questions about it. And we haven't got time today for me to delve deeply in that, but it's really key. A second part of making great decisions is the team, the team, the team. You use people, you talk to people, you will always get different viewpoints, things you hadn't thought of, um, new ways of looking at it. it. might change your mind completely even of what you were thinking to do. You use the people around you. You talk to others. A lot of managers, again, they, they're led to believe, you know, the buck stops here. I make all the decisions. I'll, I'll think this one over on my own. You know, it's weakness to let other people in. That's rubbish. It's weakness not to let other people in. You need other people's views. You need their input to help you to make great decisions. Third thing is keep earth in the window. And this comes from the uh, great movie Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks and Kevin Bacon and Ed Harris. And there's a scene where Tom has to pilot the, the, the ship back to try and get back into Earth's orbit. But he's got no, uh, no electricity, so he's got no, um, nothing to, no computer to tell, help him guide it. So he figures out if he, they send, they push the rockets and he keeps Earth in his window, you know, then he'll be able to steer the ship, steer the ship correctly. And he does. And for business, it's the same. What's the long term vision? That's your Earth in the window. And you should bring all your decision making back to that. Does that help us get to that long term? Is that Earth in the window? And it helps you to balance your decisions. You always keep that there. And lastly, make a decision. You can't make great decisions without making a decision. And I would often hold up to people and say, hey, I've got the world's greatest decision-making tool right here, Mandy. This is it. We're going to make this decision right now. Yeah? And that uh, you'd be surprised how that sharpened their minds. Oh, no, 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 I'll make the decision. I'll make the decision. Okay, make the decision. So make the, making great decisions is first. Second is being great with people. You, you, know, you can't build big, great businesses on your own. You need to be great with people. You need to pass that along. I could talk on that for a month and a half, but let's let's stop there. Be great with people. The last thing is the one that you know people go, oh, really? Um, and that is creativity, innovation. Mm -hmm. You have to do things differently. You can't just be exactly like somebody else and expect to succeed. Internally, externally, whatever it is, you have to do things differently and you have to be creative. And a lot of you out there might be thinking, well, I'm not a creative person, but that's rubbish. Everybody can be creative or you don't even have to be creative yourself. You just have to push the people around you to be creative. And yeah. again, I've got oodles of ways to help you be creative, but uh, not for the time we have today. So yeah, how did Admiral really make this business from zero to multi, multi, multi billions and pay billions of dividends along the way, literally billions, yeah? Well, we're talking, we made great decisions. Not all of them worked, but we made great decisions along the way. We were good with people. Uh, you know, people wanted to be, Monday mornings weren't torture. In fact, a lot of people still uh, look forward to Monday morning. And we were creative. We came up with new ways of doing things internally and externally. And that helped us achieve what we've achieved and what they're still achieving at Admiral today. Yeah, very good points. And it almost brings me full circle back to culture because when I first set up my business back in March, I one of the things I realised I missed about Admiral was the people and the culture. One of the first things I did was join a, a networking group, a local networking group called Socket, where I was part of a professional but very friendly and welcoming networking community. And suddenly I was surrounded by people again who wanted to help me and had a genuine desire to help me make my business succeed. And of course, it was a pleasure to help people I met there as well. We, you know, we reciprocate referrals and that kind of thing. And it reminded me very much of, of Admiral. It's, it's definitely been fundamental in my success as I've grown my business. And it got me reflecting on one of my favorite memories of Admiral. So we were famously listed in all the uh, Sunday Times best companies to work for since that competition started, right? And we attended some amazing ceremonies in London. I remember one in particular where we 
the best got lost and we actually started talking about the way we could run an internal competition with the same sort of principles to sort of prepare for some. Well, I remember that well, Mandy, if I can cut, cut in. Yeah. We finished in 30 sec 32nd or 38th that year. We were really bitter and disappointed. Yeah. So we yeah. got on the bus and we read about the companies that were in the top 10 and we said, we do that and we do that. And so we started to think, you know, we, I, I felt that everybody on the bus was so engaged in how can we improve our position? I said, how can we get that same spirit to permeate throughout the whole organization? And yeah. we came up with this idea, well, why don't we hold our own internal best departments to work for com mm -hmm. competition in Admiral and get everybody to think about how they can be a great department and that will feed upwards to us being that great company. And it took off like like wildfire. It's still one of the best days on the Admiral calendar, um, the best departments to work for. It's it's it, it's an amazing tradition that we started on that bus ride uh, many years ago. Must be almost twenty years ago, for sure. And and then you know, my memory after that was that. I was actually invited to present an award at that very competition, that award ceremony in the city hall some years later. And it was such an honor to be presenting an award to a colleague, you know, in that competition, real honor to be presenting. But unbeknown to me, I'd actually been listed as an award winner myself that night. And that was just such a massive shock to me. Um, when I was presented with the Culture Manager Award. But what I remember most about it was talking to you in the bar afterwards because I was a bit shell-shocked and I said, I don't really understand why I've won this award. You know, I don't do anything special. The helping customers and looking after the team come very naturally to me. That's my job. And it was at that point you pointed out to me that that's exactly why I had one, because I didn't think it was anything special. Um, but in fact, you know, people who nominated me for that award obviously thought I was doing something that supported the culture of Admiral. So mm -hmm. it was a lovely memory. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I think that does sum it up, Mandy. You know, it's it's not about necessarily about those special moments. It's about every day. Yeah, and for sure. The consistency uh, mm -hmm. that you brought to your department and your team and the care and the culture wasn't built in that day. It was built over a long period of time. And then it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger with that consistency. And that in a sense, every day is a special day when yeah. they compare it to cultures elsewhere, but it's not about doing that one off, you know, that champagne cork flying. Yeah. It's about those everyday moments that people take home. And when they, you know, people say, oh, how do you like your job? They go, yeah, I like my job. You know, that's magic, magic to my ears. That's brilliant. Well, thank you for all the insights that you've shared about the Admiral journey. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now in the world of semi-retirement. Yeah, semi-retirement. I, I mentor quite a lot of people, um, a lot of Admiral people, some ex-Admiral people, some other people. Um, we, we invest in a number of small businesses. Those take up some time. I'm a board member for the WRU. That takes up some time. Um, we travel a lot. So that takes up some time. So, uh, yeah, there's only a shortage of time. <laughs> I, um, I remember my mum after she retired saying to me, she has no idea how she ever had time to work. Absolutely. I, so I, I, I can, I can appreciate that comment now. Feel, feels a bit like that. So there's been a lot of changes for me this year as well. As you know, I launched my business back in March and I'm still learning how to be a business owner and, and make all those sort of things happen. So uh, what's the biggest difference for you then, Mandy? What's the biggest change between kind of running an area and now starting up this wonderful business you've started? I guess the biggest change is going back to the people um, at Admiral and perhaps underestimating. I always knew I had a fantastic team around me and always exceeding targets and making it a great place to work. 
I think what I didn't realize was how many other elements supported that success. You know, the facilities department, marketing, mm. HR, the post room, you know, um, certainly IT, all the technology and, and so many other elements. So as a business owner, I found myself on my own. And, you know, if something didn't work, there wasn't someone to call to ask to fix it mm. or give me advice. Um, yes, you know, throughout the networking and with the connections I've made over the years, I have been quite happy to ask for help, but it was a big leap and uh, I'm learning a lot very quickly. Great. Well, I'm sure given, you know, given your track record, you'll make a great success of Aspiration Station. Thank you. That's that's really kind of you to say. And I think over my career in Admiral, having developed strategies to sort of help me in my role and, and then my team sort of meet the, de the growing demands of, of, you know, as the business grew, the workloads grew um, and the diversification, we had to learn so many different things. I started to develop techniques that sharing with other people was helping them do their jobs better and I guess the whole inspiration to launch my business was based on the difference I made to people when I was training and coaching them and I realized throughout the pandemic actually like many people I had the opportunity to take a step back and go through some deep reflection about what I wanted. And it's funny you should talk about forward planning because I was reading back through the interview that you did shortly after lockdown and you'd mentioned to the journalist, it's a great idea to put like a date 10 years in advance and what where you wanna be, what you wanna be doing in 10 years and work back from that. Great advice because, you know, having a goal is always a good thing. And I realized when I did my deep reflection that it was the world of learning and development that lights me up. That is when I am creative. That is when I shine. And I thought, do you know what? This isn't a rehearsal. I've got to do something I love. And as you famously said, Henry, people who like what they do, do it better. Great. Well, I wish you all the best, Mandy. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm sure you'll help a lot of people out there. And that's what it's all about. Well, I'd like to close by saying I'm so very grateful you took the time to join me today, share insights and for your ongoing support. Um, you were a massive inspiration to me during my career at Admiral, as I'm sure you have inspired so many other people who still work in Admiral. Um, and we'll all be eternally grateful for that, Henry. So I'd like to thank you thank very you. much for your help. And I hope to see you again really soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you. See you again soon.